Hey guys, welcome to part two. <laughs> They're not too bad. <laughs> They're getting better, aren't They're they? They're getting a little bit better. Are you like, how are you coming up with a new little tune? Are you going to run out of ideas at some point? Oh God, no. I listen to too much Dylan to run out of uh, Dylan reference number two nice. in the podcast. <laughs> nice. There's been episodes in between these two, Isaac. What are you talking about? There's yeah, been more that's true. Dylan references. I'm going to try and get at least six in we each episode. We did not record these out of order at all. No. No. No, we didn't. Oh, you uh, talk about an episode one, you talk about an episode seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the big deal? You know what I mean? Yeah. Spread it up. Yeah, spread the love. Is this episode seven? I don't even know what number this is. I don't even be. know. Well, but You'll find out when it's on the website, I guess. Wherever the wind blows us, man. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> so lame. <laughs> Just, just let the wind take you, man. This is part yep. two of God knows how many parts of uh, of Taylor and myself and Isaac and whoever else is here talk about acting yep. and other things to do with acting. In the first episode, Taylor talked about a little bit about uh, how he likes to watch Batman over and over again. And um, now, <laughs> now we're on to part two. What was it? Batman it was winning a ba- talent contest. That's why I have yeah. no idea how we won it. Writing the play. Writing the play yeah. and then my dad writing the sequel. Yep. So I was a ghost writer. He was a ghost writer and I took credit for it. Yeah. And you know, I've just got a lot of stories, man. I could So whatever you want to know. So we, we left that episode off. Yes. Sort of unexpectedly. We're talking about the ethics of rehearsing too much or too little. That's what we talked about. You're absolutely right. And I sort of made a case a little bit for not rehearsing the scene that you're actually going to do at least with the actor that you're actually going to perform it with Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but preparing a hell of a lot as a character and if the two actors in the scene have a pre-established relationship as far as the film goes I think that those actors should get to know each other a little bit without doing the actual scene yeah and there's your philosophy that acting happens on the first take yeah yeah I'm stealing that from Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah but yes and I sort of agree. But, and look, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying like this is what's worked for me. And the reason that I do this is because I don't like to miss that moment when the actors run it for the first time. Because some sometimes things happen and like you can't really fake surprise like instinctually. It, it just doesn't... It never quite looks right to me. Mm. So also like if I worked in theatre and had like a bunch of plays under my belt and had act, saw actors run scenes over and over again, I would probably think differently. And... Maybe I will do theatre at some point and, and direct the plays and have actors run those scenes and really refine them and get them to that sort of stage. But sort of at the moment, this is, seems to be what has sort of worked for me. Yeah. I would consider working in a different way if an actor was like, no, I really want to run this scene over and over again with my scene partner and that scene partner also agrees to that, then fine, let's do it. Summary of, that's the summary of the episode we just did that you just heard, if you heard, go back and listen to that one if that sounds like something you want to talk about. We were going to talk about Isaac directing oneers because he has done those. Yeah. And by oneers we mean shots that go on for an extended yeah. period. An entire of time. scene is covered in one single shot in yeah. a single take. And particularly it's good to specify as well, this had no hidden cuts in it. Yeah, exactly. This was this was a true one up. A true one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've shot long establishing shots before. Taylor knows this as somebody who's... And you know this as well, because you've been... Are you, telling me in, are you yeah. talking about the 12-minute wide that you just left me in? Here you go, go. I didn't leave it in 12-minute wide. I left you in a 12-minute wide and, then and a 12-minute single and a... Tw- every, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. tend to run... I like to run my scenes start to finish so that you can actually let your actor act because it seems to me to be like some sort of weird sacrilege to make them puff up an emotional moment when they have no emotional context to it it always has always to me resulted in better performances even if actors brave face it and say things like no no i can get there as soon as you call action it's like i don't fucking believe you because i've seen you run the whole thing and it's better than that every single time Mm. so i try to like i intentionally plan shots and write scripts sometimes make script changes so that i can set up a shot here run the whole scene that way and end it here Mm -hmm. And the trade-off of that is you don't get to do as many shots, but I'm not somebody who likes to see a whole bunch of shots anyhow. I don't need the wide shot, the little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit... Like, you know, I gave you one single. Yeah. This is the same thing for all of Bloom. I only gave everybody one single and a, and a master sometimes. Sometimes I cut the master early because I knew I was going into the shot reverse. The, the thing about the one is that Isaac shot is that they involved camera movement. Yes. Of which I have never done a one Yeah. With and, camera and movement. Con- Actually, con- I, I have done one, but I'm not going to... Way yeah. ago, but 
Isaac has done very, very complicated wonders. Yeah, with constant camera movement with from the beginning to choreography end. of camera movement, choreography of actors, yeah. how they have to actually move <laughs> together, choreography of people bringing props into scenes to yeah. like pull things off, like very yeah. high Having pressure shit. To, to give the object of, to give the illusion that objects are appearing. Sure. That would have been tough. Scene. That would have been tough. Yeah, and for, for sound, it was very tough. Kind of like Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind, where you got to like run out of shot there quickly, yeah. and then like get changed Definitely. and come back. And yeah, it really worked, but I can imagine it would have been like that. The director of photography that Noah's worked with as well, Angus MacArthur Williams. Yeah, a it wasn't Eternal Sunshine, but it was another Michelle Gondry project for a show called Kidding that he did. He mm-hmm. had an excellent montage that was all a one shot which showed the progression of uh, I don't want to give it too much away but it was a woman getting her life together and it was all shot within one apartment and they wanted to show her I think I've seen that it's, yeah, yeah and it's the, really it's, good it's really cool and yeah. they are they wanted to show that she's buying new furniture cleaning up her apartment buying a pet yeah. and they wanted to do it all in one shot so they had to did you plan your attraction shot because of that? Did you, you were like, it, it, it was an, like it was an early idea, but that's not where you based it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All the reasoning. Gotcha. Yeah. And it was, well, to be honest, I, I had a few reasons why I wanted to do that. I wanted, I thought it would be a great idea if it, within the scheme of flesh and ivory, the dream sequences, a big element of those dream sequences is the fact that the protagonist has hyper intensified focus. Sure. On whatever he's meant to be thinking about. Yeah. And I wanted to emphasize this with zero cuts. Yeah. And I wanted a steady cam that was super floaty mm-hmm. throughout. And I wanted fog that smoothed the corners of all the edges of the room. Mm-hmm. And I, the more I thought about this, the more I liked it. Yeah. And then an example that got brought up by Angus is he said, oh, here's a shot that does that really well. Oh, and he With a up point. Kidding. Yeah. Okay. And of course... I knew about kidding. I didn't know about the shot, mm. and I, I love Michelle Gondry, obviously. And yeah. I thought, oh, this is so great. Yeah. yeah, let's take some ideas from this. And so, one thing, it's 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 tricky because I ha- I had a few things that were in the equation that aren't in the equation anymore for me as a director. I knew about the fact that this was my first time directing a short film of this scale, mm-hmm. and I knew that actors improvising on the day and discovering new things when we're on a shooting schedule and we're trying to figure things out and every minute is money Mm -hmm. all of a sudden this is a new experience for me i knew that i probably wouldn't have the experience to be able to juggle things like that as quickly as i would need to Mm -hmm. so what i decided to do is i thought okay well now i can give myself the time to rehearse one shots i can get my my slow my slower directing pace inside a space like a rehearsal space where it can be as slow as I need Mm -hmm. I can figure out the one shot and I can have this camera movement with this effect and have it also cater for the fact that I'm not as quick on set with my actors yet Mm -hmm. so I could figure out the bugs beforehand and as long as I maintain to the actors that they should only be giving 50 to 60 percent in these rehearsals Mm -hmm. then I could still keep some sort of semblance of that first take being the first true acting sure that's interesting i've had something similar where it wasn't exactly a one-er although i did shoot some one-ers on neighbors and and i guess we can get into that later yeah but a a great director who i really enjoyed working with named lawrence there was a really emotional scene that i had to do and we just rehearsed it at like 50 percent. like i was bawling my eyes out in this scene and he just said to me just just hold it just chill you know don't do it now went out there in the first take and if i may say so myself there was some stuff i was terrible in but uh i was i i feel like i nailed that take (laughs) so you really do have to time that correctly like if you're an actor anyone watching as an actor just know when you got to be in the sweet spot when it's time to peak and uh don't run the race before you you do it don't use all of your uh emotional juices all of your emotional energy absolutely and pray to god that the camera blocking's right when that happens as well yeah. because then if because it's it's tough as an actor like you want to uh capture that in the first take second take third take but you may begin to run out of that energy 
maybe on the logistical side, if it hasn't been captured yet, and I've had this happen to me before, you've mm-hmm. seen this happen to me, then you're in like a weird recreating kind of where you're trying to for, almost force it a little bit mm-hmm. and you've already run the lap that you wanted that it to be that lap yeah. that was recorded, that was yep. shown. Uh, so it's got to be the synchronicity of everything working together yep. and hopefully you can uh, capture lightning in a bottle how at does, the right time. How does that feel, holding that back? Is it is it tough? No, not really. I, it's it's like, you guys know me, like it's done in the preparation and you just kind of hold it there and I'll like just stand in the corner and just spend some time with myself, maybe listen to some music or something and then write when we're ready to go out. It, it kind of feels like a dam being held back and you're just holding it there and then you get the permission in the take to let the dam explode. Yeah. That's kind of like the, maybe the best way that I can describe it. For me, that's my opinion and yeah. I could be wrong. But that's the way I've done it. And with regards to getting something out so intense like crying on scene, it sounds like you were there with a a more experienced actor at the time. Yeah, I was there. I was there with um, Ariel Kaplan. Uh, Her character was Imogen. And she was basically telling my character, Mason, that she didn't love me anymore. That she wanted to... It was a breakup scene. And, uh, you know, that character was known for trying to be such a tough guy. So I really wanted to take a personal moment when it was just me and Imogen and the rest of Australia watching, but Mason didn't know that they were, that Australia's in his living room, Mm. you know? Um, So, and I just wanted to really just give a nuance of a character who is publicly such a tough guy, but privately he became really emotional during that breakup. So Aria was very respectful and uh, I think, yeah, we captured it. Lawrence, the director came over to me afterwards and said, we got it. No need to do another take. We got it. Now we'll come in for some other shots. Was that asked of you in the screenplay to like get emotional? I can't remember. It, it, it can be kind of written in such a way that if you are feeling to get emotional on yeah. it, you can go for it. But right, if right. not, you can kind of just sure. be a bit lazy if you want to be yeah. uh, um, and, and move through it. But you decided to really... I always... If, I'm, if I have it in me yeah. on the day, and even if I don't have it in me, I'll still probably try to go for it. Sure. Because I'll always try and put as much nuance into my characters as possible. I never want my characters not to be believable. So if I'm trying to put nuance and make my characters interesting, Mm. but I can feel that it's veering away from believability into unbelievability, if that's a word, I will then stop the interestingness. So as far as I can go within believability, I will make them interesting. Yep. But if the interestingness starts going beyond the believability, then that's where I know that that's where the bracket is. Yeah. And that's as far as I'll go. Yeah. That's the that's the, the checklist. There's this old um, Kubrick interview that's like, there's actually audio for, which they aren't. And he's like, what the things you're looking for in a performance are like, first of all, is it is it accurate? So does it say what you want it to say? So you have those talks with those actors previously. It's like, well, what, why is this person... What's the intent behind why they're saying this or acting like this? So that way, when they say the line, it actually means what you want it to say. Because you can say any number of words and have them mean something else depending on how you say the words, you know? Mm. So that has to be right. That's very, very basic. And then the next thing is, is it believable? Is it honest, right? Does it feel like it's actually believable? And then if you get those two things correctly, and only if you do then can you do something to make it more interesting? Yes. So that's, yes. yeah, that's been my checklist that I have just kept all the time is like watching a performance is like, once these two first things are, uh, are ticked off, which, you know, sometimes it's even hard to get those two things down. Yeah, absolutely. Then you can do the barrier of pushing things and making it more interesting. Because once you've got the believability founded, yeah, you can make it more interesting for free. Yeah. yeah. If not at the expense of the believability. But like I said, if it starts veering away from believability, then you need to go, oh, I I could move into caricature zone here. And I don't want to do that. Depends what you're in the medium of playing. Yeah. But uh, no, I always just try and make my stuff as believable as possible. Look, I've I've also experimented on self tapes, Mm. only doing believability and not interestingness. So I've like only played them completely believably. Yeah. And the feedback that you can get back is that you're boring. Yeah, I think... And I understand to go completely believable... Depends on... Can be interesting. 
but it, it, so it's completely subjective. We're in personal taste zone now. It depends. So on something you do for one person may not work for another. It depends on what you're shooting for. It's like if something's hyper realistic, you don't always have to do anything to make it super interesting. You know what I mean? Like I think the thing that I've told actors most of the time is just like just keep it simple. Like mm. keep it because I think actors maybe it's a sign of like you weren't guilty of this, but the, the actors who I've worked with where it's like they they want to. Maybe it's the sign of a more like inexperienced actor to try and make the scene about them and to like really grip the scene and like take the scene and steal the scene and have it sort of be their scene, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if you have two actors in a room doing this with each other, then you're ruined. (laughs) Like Mm. if the thing that is actually interesting is the dynamic in the middle of the two actors. Yeah, like, and you like want to make said in the last episode. The, yeah, yeah. Hitting the tennis. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the tennis is actually the most important thing. It's not your performance. The ball performance. is the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The magic yeah. in between. And all of the best scenes are, like, not scenes where, like, people are, like, stealing scenes from people to me. It's, like, the scenes that where that, that in-between space is the most interesting thing, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So... Isaac, how did you go capturing that tennis ball, if, yeah. you, if you will, yeah, when, on your one up? Yeah. Did you sleep the night before? That's the first. Thing. How, <laughs> yeah. how, how did you feel the night before? I was, I was very. Um, well, the night before, I was, as as we'd said, like as you've said with your performances, Taylor, when we had the idea to do it, I was so excited to do it. I knew yeah. that I'd never done that before, and I knew that I was going to do three in one film, um, yeah. because there's three different dream sequences you started with the it was the it was the the proof of concept technically the first day of shooting was a a one-up to me i would think that would be the hardest one uh it was the first one chronologically yeah chronologically it is yeah it's the most confusing it's the most moving part yeah it it and especially in the dynamic between the people in the scene Mm. because it's a dream yeah it is technically one character talking to himself, Mm -hmm. but he's talking to himself through two different lenses. And so even just writing that for me, which is writing that kind of scene is something I had never done before. That was very challenging. Sure. But I feel like as well as I could have at the time, I, but the cat, also the camera movement in that scene is so precise. I I remember we were like 14 takes deep until we finally got that thing. And I knew we would be, I knew I, I, totally yeah, yeah, yeah. An- anticipated that and yeah. I I was well, I was nervous initially when I had the idea because yeah. I knew it was something I'd never tackled yeah, yeah, yeah. but one thing that I knew that I wanted to do mm. is I thought okay in the rehearsals with my actors any ideas that we had that are new ideas we're going to try and get them out here as <laughs> best as we can yeah. which I know I'm I'm and it's asking a lot. And, and at I'm, a certain point, you're going to have to lock and say, okay. Exactly, exactly. And so what we did is, on the day, things that couldn't change was camera blocking and prod design. Yeah. <laughs> and the and the people who were going to come into the room when the camera wasn't facing them and move props into the room. I knew I had two things, okay, I can't change these on the day. Because mm-hmm. this, this requires technical changes, lighting changes. Those can't change. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well... I don't want to make the performances so rigid mm-hmm. and so stuck because of these limitations. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is they'll, they're going to be sorted on the day for sure. Mm. But what in rehearsals, I'm going to walk around with, with my iPhone and we're going to figure out and workshop this camera movement based on the performances that I'm seeing mm-hmm. in the scene. So we blocked it out. So the camera movement, though it was it on the day, in rehearsals was secondary to the performances. Depending on where I was seeing particular things, I knew that maybe I'd want to be close here. Maybe I'd want to come to the side here. Mm. Okay. And it was balancing because it's obviously all a one shot and I wanted it to be flowing. Mm -hmm. I knew that I couldn't do things like, okay, close up, come back, close up, come back Mm -hmm. because that doesn't work. I would have to come close up find some sort of motivation to come back here okay maybe we can come back to the close up through here but all of that camera blocking was figured out in rehearsal Mm -hmm. and so i felt like the good thing was i felt like we still played tennis Mm -hmm. i feel like we weren't playing my game which Mm -hmm. was good as much as i tried to obviously give my direction and write the script Mm -hmm. we changed lines of dialogue Mm -hmm. our actors had heaps of ideas 
but we still figured out the shot there. And I it remember served I was, the performances. Yeah, I was on that set that day. And I you could were, see actually. you over I remember there, you were in the back. Yeah. And I wanted to say hello, but I could just see that you were really busy. And yeah. maybe to leave we you... We were shooting the final one, which is the longest one as well. That okay, day. okay. So I was, you both best believe I was stressing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so for probably best I didn't go and say, hey, Isaac. Yeah. I appreciate oh, it. Are you going to get me in one of your movies? <laughs> in the future? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Taylor, I don't want to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, it would have been hard. Give me a minute. <laughs> so fair enough. So I remember on Neighbours, I, I did this. Uh, it, it, this wasn't a one at all. But it was uh, like kind of a wide with some little shots in the middle. But it was a long scene that I had to do. A lot of dialogue. I remember we did, we did the, the take and I felt good for the first half of the first take. And the second half of the first take I felt was just absolute trash. So I go over to the director. Her name is Joe, And I say, Joe, I was not good in the second half of that take. Can mm-hmm. we please do it again? And she's like, you know what, Taylor? Yeah, we, oh, I'm going to let you do it again. You can do it again. I was like, oh awesome fantastic so i do it again oddly maybe it was a mental thing the first half of the second take was trash and the second half of the second take i felt like was spot on yeah this is the risk of one as right yeah do you know what I mean? uh, so i say to her joe i didn't get the first half of the second take should we do a whole other and i'll try and get the whole thing and she said this is what she said to me taylor my job is to make you look good if you look shit i look shit Yes. That's what she said to me. Very yeah. true. So yeah. then when it aired four months later and I watched it, the first half of the first take was in there, cut into someone, something happens in the middle oh, of the scene. Oh, wow. The second half of the second take. Brilliant. Made me look so much better yep. than oh, I am. That's fantastic. If you had have put the other halves in there, I'm so glad that they got left on the cutting room floor. Mm-hmm. But that's the beauty of being able to have a little cut, but you don't have that op- option. Yeah, do you, when no, I did not. Run. It was particularly in that, I wish. <laughs> I you wish I, you could just come in for a, uh, just a reaction shot. Yeah, that would no. be. Or maybe. Oh, the camera got or a going bump, on the a hands or something. You know? Yeah, and you know what's crazy? There's actually plenty of opportunities I could have done that in hindsight. But I, I really, I was in the early stages of studying film at the time, and I really wanted to challenge myself. I really wanted to see if I could do this. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather ask myself that question early. Well, good on you, man, for doing try that. It. Thank you so much. It was, uh, yeah, I was intimidated by it, mm-hmm. absolutely. But we just prepared like hell. And I, and I thought about it a lot. So after the... F- how many rehearsals did you do? We did a few weeks heading up to it. We did a couple of times a week for half an hour. And ish. after seeing the first take... Yeah. What were your thoughts? What did you need to try to get into the minds of the actors after the first take? How were you feeling? On the partic- on the shooting day or in On rehearsals? the shooting day. On the shooting day, the actors were the actors were pretty great. They pretty much already had it, mm-hmm. which was good. It was it was Did it feel a little so, overcooked? No. Good. No, which was wow, nice. That's hard to do. Yeah, and it was uh just in rehearsals. It was always guys. You it even on the day it could be easy to overcook it because mm-hmm. camera movement, getting it to the point where that camera movement is perfect, mm-hmm. this might be 10 takes in. So I said, e- like we're going to be doing weeks even before this. Please just take it easy. And that's, I know... I, I would I'm, love to hear that. I would love to just dawdle <laughs> through a scene at 30%. Yeah, I was never, I was never too <laughs> you know critical I mean? of that. Yeah, uh, that, no. That's so rare that you have a director come up and just say, hey... Just don't do anything yeah. with this for like six <laughs> weeks. I knew, you know? yeah. yeah. And Noah and I had had talks that. about that. I because I knew I you could overcook it. I knew that there was a there was a chance. It was a very healthy chance that that could happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But something that I did as well to assist this is okay. So where let's just say I knew that we're going to run it. We're going to workshop it. We'll get it to a particular point at the end of rehearsals. And then from the end of rehearsals, we're going to decide that we're going to run it that particular way on the day. And I knew that, okay, so that is pretty much, I know that the blocking, even if they have a little bit of variety in their performances, the blocking is it. That blocking is pretty, pretty well good. Like I know, I know at least the decisions to stand up, sit down, move. Mm. Those were, were very confident in the reasons why. You know, I'd actually feel pretty good to kind of mechanically lock in some of those movements shooting a one is definitely its own thing mm-hmm. so you 
you do need to lock and like I said acting is the greatest truth and the greatest lie at the same time absolutely so you you are locking some things and then acting like you're doing it for the first time again yep. you get self tapes come through and they're like hey here's nine pages of dialogue can you send it to us in 24 hours mm. so when you get ready to shoot it you're you know <laughs> you're, you're like sometimes you can feel really uncomfortable when you're doing it so I would imagine that conversely to have some mechanics of okay you get here you turn there you turn there you look here you look there and then within those moments you can do a bit of play yeah that would be nice as well i definitely advise and i think i did this with a lot of my shots is like the way in which people have to move so sometimes i try and plan shots and like shoot scenes in such a way where actors sort of have the freedom to move around a little bit in terms of like i mean physically but then also there are times where I have to be like quite specific about things and tell people like you need to lean over here or move here or do this or do that and and if you're going to shoot like a scene that's going to take an extended period of time so when I work with Jack I have to be he likes to know where the camera is going to be so that he can see the frame so that he you know one of the reasons being so he knows how much he can move you know what i mean yeah i, I mean i just went and checked this camera here yeah for the same thing i yeah. think it's just like a, that bit of the actor's thing like you you'll probably see an actor go like hey where are we are we here or are we here like, yeah, yeah. Are we? just so that if you do anything whack that feels you know you know what you're working with it yeah, yeah yeah which is totally reasonable it's fair enough yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. especially if you have to do scenes where you actually have to so of course close-ups whatever but if you have a thing where if there are these scenes that run forever like <laughs> the scenes that i made you do <laughs> that i'm still doing that, that scene yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you run those like i even remember the day before the night before we did that jack and you got together and i was like can we run at like a mechanical rehearsal basically just meaning like don't use any energy yeah just sit where you're going to sit and jack stand where you're going to stand and Taylor, you were like, is it all right if I stand up and move over here this much and like walk around the side of the room? And What's I was that? like, yes, but you have to use this much of the room and not this much a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and then what? Oh, I bet I would have been like, oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were totally fine with it. Oh, but I can just do the same thing within this area. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Easy. And it still gave you room to move around and things mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't swing the camera the whole way around because it would have crossed the line and the eye lines wouldn't have matched in the whole bit. Yeah. But you were able to move enough so that it was still working. And I still framed it nice and wide, you know, so we could see what you were doing the whole time. It was just, it's always a concern when you run those long shots. It's like, you do have to know where the actors are going to move so that you know where the camera has to be, yeah. pretty much. But during those rehearsals, you don't have to use any energy. You just be like, don't use any energy. This is a very mechanical thing. This is just so that we know where the camera is. Don't act. Mm -hmm. Just move. Like, literally, it's just like you're going from here to here. How far are your hands out this way? Things like this. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's not... It shouldn't... Especially if those scenes are intensely emotional. It's like, no, I just need to know where you move, basically. Yeah. So, like, when Jack had to do something emotional in Bloom, I won't say what, I was just like, so when you're actually going to do this in this scene, how are you actually going to move and he was like well i might move a little bit over here and a little bit here and there and so i already was like this camera's <laughs> wide <laughs> so that you can sort of do what you need to do yeah and it's fine because he's in frame and another reason i left it wide is like i'll talk about that in like a, a bloom thing it's like sometimes you don't want to be too close to an actor if they're doing something hugely emotional because it feels a bit inappropriate but like having that camera wide for him and allowing him to sort of do that it's like audience members are smart you know where to look you don't need to have the images spoon fed mm. you know it's like you don't need them to look specifically here then specifically here then they'll they'll watch the per like <laughs> people watch people you don't yeah. need to have it like this close you know what i mean so that's the thing it's just like have the mechanical rehearsals so you know exactly the actors know where they need to be yeah and then let the emotion come when you're actually shooting so they don't tire themselves out and know that if the emotions are big you're not going to get many takes yeah because you can't ask an actor to work themselves up 10 times mm. in like an hour or like you just they're just not going to do it and it's not even the fact that they're not actually going to be able to do it like you'll max out at like five takes or seven takes yeah. or something like this like you're not going to get much more than that that was one thing that i i 
made sure that I did as well with regards yeah. to the burnout mm-hmm. is and overcooking it. It's a real thing. It's absolutely. And especially there's, there's, there's things in the oneers that I knew would be difficult for the actors and it, in a way because it wasn't fun to play for them mm-hmm. uh, in something... the nicest way. So it, it, it would take energy. Emotionally heartfelt. Yes, that's the best way, yeah. Absolutely. And so what I would do is I and I knew that we wouldn't get with the steady cam op who I who cost money to rent. So I couldn't rehearse with him before. We had to work with him on the day. Did he learn it all pretty quickly? He learned it all quick and mm-hmm. it was great. We showed him our DOP had a great idea on the day and it was something we did in rehearsals, recording with an iPhone. The DOP would walk around the set with an iPhone and record it and then show the DOP the footage on the iPhone. Like, at this point, this is the framing. At this point, this is the framing. So we knew. But with regards to the actors, because I knew that we wouldn't get the camera movement on the first go, naturally, because we've, we've just had this guy walk onto set, I would tell them, keep holding, please. You timed the release. Yeah. Wow. And we're gonna, we'll, I'll give you, because I knew that if That's we, if we gave the cam op a rest, we could, we had him for 10 to 15 takes and steady cams are tough on your back so we would make him rest obviously but i knew that we could probably have him do the scene longer than i could have the actors do the scene That's as, pretty smart. as best as they could yeah so from about take five on start then we start <laughs> really really good. bringing in things yeah 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 so yeah. what happens if what happens if the actor is like giving a subpar performance because you've told them to hold back yeah and the camera movement you're like, it's fuck, perfect. I'm hoping for a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. hoping for a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you can justify calling cut. But then again, I guess... It, yeah. you, and if it happens, it's like, so be it. Because I'd rather that than the other way around. Yes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it must be easier for a tangible, practical, logistical camera operator to recreate a camera movement than for an actor to recreate a performance, right? Absolutely. Yeah, especially because camera ops are able to do it over and over again yeah but the thing about you think they'd get better and better whereas the the acting thing can be an emotion a lightning in a bottle that's exactly right i think um with with camera ops it's or at least my experience in this day is it got better 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 and then we had a long plateau where it was all the same and then it would start getting worse obviously because it's a heavy camera it can be sore on your back then it then it goes down quick but you get this kind of so yeah, period did of space you... and with actors it's like yeah yeah this. it's the same thing except it's just except this it's much way <laughs> narrower yeah, yeah, so yeah. i was like okay i'm gonna yeah, do the yeah. math on this so so uh, yeah nah. so and one thing i'll add as well just before we move on is um as well as telling the actors to amp up a little bit later in the takes i did a thing in preparation with my actors where we made character profiles for each of uh their oh, characters yeah. and it was only one to two pages it wasn't did you write them or did they write them? I, I wrote it with them. I would ah. write some and then I would ask them and we would talk about it. And if they had any ideas as well, we would talk about the current ideas. And if we didn't like one, we would scrap it. Yep. And sometimes they would add ideas and I would keep it or I would scrap it. So cool. it was together. Yeah. And sometimes, and I wanted to keep these meetings thoughtful, but not too, you know, you can obviously talk about this kind of thing for hours. I wanted to keep it more brief. And so sometimes there were elements in these character profiles where I knew maybe the actor didn't understand a complete context on particular events. If I felt like I needed to introduce something, I could mention something that we had discussed in the character profile, but I could reveal context. Mm-hmm. and so suddenly there's something new or at least that's what I hoped and sometimes I got it sometimes I could bring up something with their backstory and say oh okay you know this you know how we talked about this kind of thing mm-hmm. this is kind of where this plays so at the very least there's a new context to something that we've already rehearsed okay to try and like freshen it up because we've done it so many times before yeah so with all three takes the three yep. the three oneers at what point do you feel you achieved the take that you went with for each one? Was From like a performance perspective? Performance and uh, DOP perspective. It was somewhere between 10 to 15. So you felt the performance was hitting and the camera work was hitting. Uh, and it was in a sweet spot. It, in, in the sweet spot between the two, it was about 10 to 15. So it was above 10 takes for the cam op and somewhere between 5 and 10 for the performance. 
Jeez, yeah, that must have been after a- we've like amped it up mm. where I'm not just getting them to block it. That must have been agonizing to pick the one to go for. Yeah, it was really I hard. can imagine. Because as a guy <laughs> that's who's it. done probably about 500 self-tapes, if you think about it, if you do one a week for 10, 12 years, mm-hmm. you're looking at your takes and you're agonizing over the right one to send. <laughs> sure. yeah. You can send two, but casting, they don't have time to watch your whole tape, really. Let's be realistic. So you probably want to send one, unless you're trying to do two or three very different things with the energies of different takes. Yeah. So you only get one take to send. Yeah. So you're agonizing over every moment. You're like, do I want them to see this part of me or do I want them to see this part? What does that mean for the character? Yeah. So I can only imagine within the context of Attraction or Flesh and Ivory, as it was renamed, yeah. that you were like, how does this movement of the, or facial expression inform the rest of the story? Yeah. It was pros and it cons. Been tough. It was full pros and cons for each and you made lists one up and you you, i bet you with with my with my we we didn't make full lists but it was long conversations with my editor Mm -hmm. because each one had advantages and each one had disadvantages because Mm -hmm. each of them were a few minutes long yeah and there's going to be peaks and troughs naturally sure and the one that the ones that you went with why did you choose those ones as opposed to the other ones i thought they were more believable to me i thought as far as you know, you know how we talk about believability versus interesting. How interesting. Yeah. I feel like in preparation we'd made enough nuance with these characters or I as well as I could, I tried to write it in in the script to help with what would turn out on the day. Mm. But what ended up being great, because we had these movements that were added an element of interestingness to it, the ones that felt the best were the most believable. Was there any, well, I guess you can reveal now, maybe you don't want to, were there any glitches with sound or the visual that you touched up in the edit to make you oh, like, in, oh, in this one, one might have a little problem, but I can fix it. Can we, I dub this line with another line type thing? Uh, oh, if, 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 did that if, happen? If you want, like, um, I can kind of remember. Because I bet that when you're like 90% of the way through the take and you're watching, cameraman's been on point, performance has been on point, and you're thinking, this is the one. Yeah. someone will open or close <laughs> yeah. the bloody door to the studio yeah, and yeah. you just hear yeah. oh man and yeah. you're just oh we like, had that oh do you have I knew you'd have totally that. we had that I knew you would have had that it was on the day as well like you know we the print takes we got were print takes okay like thank you yeah <laughs> because it's not, yeah. I'm I'm no master did you run overtime uh no we didn't nice it, each nice. each day that we had a, a one take. That was the only shot we were doing that day. Oh, okay. How many days did you shoot for? It was seven. Okay, so three of those days were oneers, and the other four were coverage. We can stuff. Uh, multiple scenes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So um. Yeah, we had things. Uh, we were shooting in a sound stage, and naturally, mm-hmm. you you talk to the first ads, you talk to the producers, you try to make the spaces as tight as you can to the point where someone can't walk in and open a door and interrupt a take but naturally if you have someone if there's 30 people on set something's yeah gonna someone's gonna knock on a door mm-hmm. someone's and gonna be especially with pro- prod designers bringing in props someone's Man. going to accidentally bang an elbow on a flat oh my someone's God. going oh, yeah. to have a stomp that goes Man. over someone's line the of stuff dialogue. that i could tell you of i had a mate in america who was a who would color grade the film and i saw a take of an actor feel like he really this is a well-known actor really feel like he hit the money with a certain take and someone was talking in the background of the set and he just oh, no. went off <laughs> and you know fair enough this guy can get away with it but you know that's that's fine if you have high standards and you want perfection but you know it's just, oh, just wow. funny i can't even imagine we luckily we didn't have anyone talk because we, mm-hmm. we had our, our POC shoot, so our proof of concept shoot, to see if doing one shots were feasible. And we had moments where people would talk. And I had to make it really, Im- really plain and is? clear. No, I'll tell you later. This okay. sounds, uh, I want to hear more about this. Yeah, yeah, I can't, but I will tell you later. I told you in the terms and conditions. Yeah. Some <laughs> stories, Bob, I will yeah, tell Bob, the story, but yeah. I won't name the name. That's yeah. it, guys. Bob, Bob the actor. Bob the actor. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob the actor. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about some things. We can't talk about other things, guys. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 
but uh, we had times on the proof of concept shoot where people would talk mm-hmm. people would say things even in between takes they would say things that actors would hear and my producer and i jackson made it a mission to make it really really clear to these people that when we're shooting on the day <laughs> because there is a situation where we only get one print take we knew that could be the case so question yeah did you know you had arrived at that print take when you shot it or did you shoot more past it right until you ran out of time and then looking back the print take was earlier we we shot past it why would you not you know just get more takes in case you can get a backup absolutely so yeah. there's there's that as well but also when when you can see that the performances are improving who am i to say that that's as good as they're going to get exactly maybe mm-hmm. like is is it still going okay you know i can talk to my cam op like mate you're doing so great my producer and i knew that this was going to be straining on him mm-hmm. so we asked and it will all be obviously it was insistence but do you need five more minutes because this act is feeling really good right now. We really need to do this. Can we please go for another one? Yeah. Because it was a full day of mm-hmm. just this. So it's tough on him. But I, I didn't know if they were going to get better. So I just kept shooting until... And you won't... Cam up was pooped. Actors were pooped. Mm-hmm. And until we ran out of time. And you won't really know unless you shoot past it. Exactly. Unless there's like the occasional thing where like an actor's just exhausted and the day is long and you have to just move on for example like then it's okay but like you won't you have to like go past the peak just to make sure that the peak was the peak absolutely well we went past my peak on bloom yeah i remember on like maybe the fifth take yeah i heard you after the take because i'm working really hard you you know what i mean yeah yeah, i I didn't i didn't give you an easy thing to do i'm sweating i'm like (laughs) it's like doing sports like it was almost like going for a job yeah yeah Yeah. there's so many different different tones in your scene too is there really the variety i've only watched it once oh yeah Yeah. had you done like a 12 minute scene before that yeah oh Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Yeah. When you have a camera and then obviously because it's going onto screen, yeah. I've done stage play as well, but they are not really comparable yeah. very much at all. Yeah. The difference is, and we haven't got into this, and I've actually have thought about this to tell you guys. Sure. My opinion, this is all, everything that I was taught, is that stage and screen are very, very different. And here's why. Because with stage, even if you're having kind of a quiet emotional kind of scene you still need to be able to have it projected for the guy or the girl who's at the back of the theater they still need to be able to hear that yeah so you kind of do need to project but with screen the camera's right here you can kind of just do like just a very soft thing and it's going to get blown up on screen so that's why they are really different Mm -hmm. and someone actually said to me they had a long sleeve shirt they had they rolled the sleeve down so the sleeve was over the arm and they scratch their arm like that with the shirt blocking the skin so they were scratching the, the long sleeve shirt then they rolled the the shirt up and then went like this and scratched their skin and they said to me which one's theater and which one's screen tell me it's the shirt rolled down that's oh uh isn't more... that interesting i i don't know if i got it right i can't remember but I, I when you hear when, it well, you, you go yes in terms of it's an interesting question mm-hmm. Uh, and I haven't directed theatre, so take it with a big fat no, of course, well. no, it's no, no problem. <laughs> but uh, I, I I'm guess what I guess one. when the sleeve is I, the how I kind of take that is when the sleeves roll down. Yeah. Because you're trying, you have that barrier that you're trying to leap, which is the person in the back row. You know, you would have to scratch harder to have the same effect oh. because, because of the distance you're trying to take. I Interesting. Was, I was thinking of it the opposite way. Where it's like, how come? When the sleeves rolled down, yeah, and you scratch under your sleeve, you can't see that you've scratched yourself, but you know that somebody has done it, or like you know because you've seen them do the action, but you can't see it. So when yeah. you roll it up and you show them that you've done the action as you do it, then they. How does that relate to this? I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of comment to you, commentary on how subtle you're allowed to be. Like you can show show the action as well as in another medium you can only show the action you don't have to show the scars right, so let me stop right, it right, right there because it's you both got some really you both got it right in your own ways so Noah you said it's a comment on how subtle you can be it absolutely is yeah how subtle you can be and and not that you can't be in theatre but how subtle you can be for screen and yeah. how you need to be a little bit more of projecting for theatre Isaac the scratch 
straight to the skin is screen That's because screen. the camera yeah. is right there. But with the long sleeve down, scratching on top of the long sleeve, that's theatre. Yeah. Because you need to project more. That's what I. That's how I feel. So in, that was. In, I remember in my yeah. thinking. You know, it's a it's a cool question because I totally agree with Noah as well. <laughs> you know, it, because it was a, a we're, we're talking about a sleeve here. You know, it's just a it's, comment on playing. Yeah, yeah. It's like how, how do you see the sleeve rolls out in the woods. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, it's just a comment on subtleness. Yeah. Right. Subtlety. And how they are similar but different mediums between theatre and screen. Yeah. I'm still a little lost on that sleeve comment. Yeah, I'll be honest. I am as well, but I gave it a red hot. <laughs> no, you both got it right in your own way. And look, that took me. I had to think about that for a little while. So when you when you have a sleeve rolled up and mm-hmm. you scratch, that is... straight on the skin. Straight on the yeah okay when you yeah when you scratch it that's a movie. That's for screen because, because the camera is right there, close and intimate to you. And you can talk just like this. So the performance is the Under. finger and the, and the arm <laughs> is let's the not, audience. Is that what we're no, saying? I'm really let's confused. Just, just, I'm really uh, confused by this. That's, that, that's kind of how I took it is like, is like okay, so... I think we're, so, overthink- I think we're getting yeah, into overthinking oh God, yeah, territory yeah. now. That's but, what, that's and and, and it's, actually not that, it's actually not that smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, uh, it doesn't go that deep. Right. I don't know that I agree that you can be more like nuanced with a performance on screen like I don't think I agree with that yeah no 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 what it means is just subtlety that the cam like with the camera being right here like Mm -hmm. you can talk like this like with down low but you can't really do that for theatre because the guy in the back row will be like what what was that what did he say yeah (laughs) you know um Speak so up, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm yeah. paid for this. Yeah. I'm paid for the seat, <laughs> I man. I can't even shit. Yeah. No, yeah. You can, no, Do totally, the volume up. Yeah. That's totally valid. That's totally, that's totally valid. I, that, totally, that's I totally agree yeah. with that. There's so many other elements to that. I definitely think you can do theatrical acting on film, though, and have it work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. look, to be admittedly, yeah. I did a lot of that in Bloom. My character in Bloom is very big. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I knew that you wanted him to be like that. So that's I, why I don't I think I ever like said that. that I wanted him to be like this huge big crazy character i had just written this character that was just like i didn't know what he really was i, I thought he could have been played in, in as soon as way. i read it yeah but taylor saw him as this big guy and i was just there like, was the only it. way i could do it the <laughs> yeah. only way i could yeah, do yeah, it yeah. it was as really soon funny as I read it. Oh, like, like, like yeah, it when funny. it was yeah it was great it was I interesting didn't, i had no idea it was so i wrote it not yeah. thinking it had anything comedic in it <laughs> and then it was just like people read it and were like this is a comedy scene. Totally. And I was like, yeah. Okay. In its beginning, for sure, without giving anything away. Because I don't definitely think, starts I don't think the scene is cracking jokes or they're like, I actually, I don't know that I wrote any jokes no, in no, the screenplay. Yeah. The comedy is just the fact that yeah, the no. scenario is ridiculous. There are scenes with Jack that I think are funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have no idea if that's the intended thing. There's a scene <laughs> with tea bags. Oh yeah, it's funny. Yeah, on a kitchen counter. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah. and a tea towel. Yes, that scene. Yeah, that's I thought very, I always thought that's, 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 that's underlying. What does it mean there. for you? You know, <laughs> yeah. That's no, no, all it is. Absolutely. absolutely. Is it even Whatever you to find you? in it, yeah. that's, that's okay. I don't mind people like laughing along with something where they're not supposed to be laughing. I think that's yeah. fine. Mm. You know, who cares? Like, it's it's. There's the difference, obviously, between like laughing at a movie and laughing with a movie. But if a movie is like doing a weird thing where it's drawing a line between is this supposed to be funny or not, yeah, and it sort of gets two reactions out of you, then that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, I don't hate that. Absolutely, there was one decision that you made, and I, I think I can say this. It doesn't give anything away about okay. the film. I'll cut it out if I yeah. feel like it's. If you don't like it, yeah. you can. But it was. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe it was in the script. I was script supervisor yeah, on the yeah. Bloom, as you know. Mm-hmm. They might not know. Thank you for saying that. So yep. that's okay. Yeah. I've. Um, <laughs> as much as I can, the can script. The script was gr- the script was great. Isaac, can you can tell I say us as well for the happened? record? Can you tell us what it <laughs> meant? What no? So if you, you're the script supervisor, <laughs> so like, you I'm read it, right? Can you tell happened. us what the hell happened in it? I can't. I can't. Well, I could tell you what I think happened in it, but mm. it just it's just not that important, is it? You know. Let's it, not. It, it, no, it's no, important. We, to we me. can we can do it in a future. Yeah, podcast, yeah. In in the Bloom episode, we will will go on a deep dive into this. But uh, I don't remember it being in the script at li- as a line of dialogue when I edited the script and supervised it. I don't remember being it in there. But you got you were given a glass of water to oh, drink, no. and what you drank idea? the glass of water. And because of who you'd formed your character to be, you drank it. And because you were really thirsty, you went 
oh fuck yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's... and that was not in the script and so... i thought that was really funny and i really yes. liked it when i got it because i just i didn't expect it <laughs> no you know it was it was in the script that oh, taylor fair. drinks the whole thing of water yeah and on the day <laughs> because there's some yeah, weird things yeah, because you've happening. been running up yeah yeah. Anyway, and, and, yeah, yeah yeah and i thought it would be funny to just have a bit where he just drank the whole thing of water basically <laughs> like I, as soon as i wrote that bit in the script i was like well if he us for a water he's yeah. gonna drink the whole thing and it's gonna be this like pause in it i think i even gonna... tried to get a little bit coming down yeah, a yeah, little bit, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> he's the kind of guy that would make everybody wait for him to finish drinking his water that yeah, was my before sort of... they can resume the conversation exactly and yeah. when taylor was doing it in the scene he was just drinking like a bit of the water and then putting it down in like the first initial takes and i was like taylor can you drink the whole thing oh and, you did tell me that yeah yeah and and, he, and, and you were like yeah all right all right fine and then like and but the sip that you took this little sip and then he says oh fuck, oh, fuck yeah <laughs> he drank the whole damn thing and that was, was that was you you yeah. came up with that bit and that it wasn't was there. hilarious though it's so good i, I think it it, what it just comes from like we talked about preparation like i had just fully formed i knew kind of a lot of who that guy was yes. yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense for every other thing in the scene is that he would say, of course he says, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's who he is. Yeah, that's you know? totally yeah. who he is. It's kind of fun, on, to be honest, to play not very smart and aware. It's fun to he write He was dopes. the bull in a china shop. I maintain shop. it's yeah. fun to write dopes. He's yeah. bumping into things in there and he doesn't know he's bumping into them. Yeah. And so I try to be very aware, self-aware person and like, very conscious and respectful all the time mm-hmm. but uh you've kind of just got to do away with that in a way it's kind of like cathartic and therapeutic and you just get to be loud and obnoxious and like abusive <laughs> yeah uh, mm. perhaps that character is in that scene yeah because you can't anywhere else because you can't anywhere else and yeah. people actually tell you that you're doing good yeah, yeah, yeah. like please do <laughs> yeah. more of it please can you do more of it again in the next time yeah. i swear to god it was making people on set wonder if you were really this way because they hadn't met you before that yeah was, i know yeah, that, which that was, was no, so I, know. I didn't i didn't really know because i i had i had only just met you and well look I there is a little there is a little bit yeah. of that in me too we ever Everyone knows, like, you play the character from a part of yourself. You take well, you have to find it within yourself to play it properly. That yeah. character, yeah. that character yeah. name, yeah. I won't say his name, yeah. but is a part of me, sure. especially when I was younger and more irresponsible. Sure. So you take that ten percent, or fifteen percent, or twenty percent, and you accentuate it and you build it into ninety, ninety-five, a hundred percent of yeah, what yeah. that character is going to be. And also, I knew that you would read this script and have an understanding further than this person's just some irresponsible dickhead that we should just completely hate. Like, I don't think that gets anybody anywhere. Hey, I, I've, I've shown actors script before and they're like, oh, this person's just a this or this person's just a I that. never judge. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. And, and I know you you've can't. all heard this yeah, before, yeah, yeah. so I'm not going to try and be a tough guy and say, oh, what you... Every actor will tell you. Every, every actor who's good or trying to be good will tell you. You cannot judge your character. Yeah. It's just like yeah. one of like the fundamental rules of acting. You cannot... Even if your character is doing bad things, chances are they believe that they're doing the right thing, or they're doing bad things and they're gonna they're trying not to. You got to find the innocent part inside of them. Yeah, true. And you've got to believe in that. That's got to be the seed inside of you. So, so I found that within that character. I think. In defense of actors who read scripts, I've definitely read a shitload of scripts where people write super caricaturish, yeah. dumb, ridiculous exaggerations of characters that are obviously like i would just read the script and be like you're just writing that sort of a person because yeah. you have some sort of personal vendetta against that type of yeah. person and or, like, or that's literally their only function within the story yeah, exactly yes, to, that's what to I was have say. that side and yeah. i don't you need that nuance you need that stripe in a supporting arc somewhere yeah. in your story and i i suppose that i felt like this character was a reasonable real person who oh, just thanks. is in the wrong place, I guess. And I had belief in you that you would read that and like understand that, if that makes sense. I remember in thanks. Yeah. I and remember you did. in and the rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I just went for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could just see you smiling in the corner. Yeah. And then I think you said something like Wow, like when I wrote this, like I never thought like that like I I made it better. Not that I'm Yeah, yeah. You I'm did not better. trying to No, you did make it better. Yeah be you didn't make it better you can say that you made it better in my opinion but yeah but i think not not that i did that but i think that's the actor's job you need to take the text yeah and you need to pull out all of your tricks to then take the material that is given to you Mm. and think how can i squeeze this 
lemon. Hopefully it's not a lemon, right? Maybe that's a bad analogy. <laughs> how do I squeeze this lemon? Yeah. No, you need to like, how do I get <laughs> as much, squeeze as much yeah. out, value out of this, whether it's good material, bad material, yeah. or in the middle. Yeah. An actor's job is to try to make the material as much better, as good as it can be, even if you only make it marginally better. Yeah. But if you've got an actor who's kind of making it worse or even, oh, maybe you'll settle for even. Sure. But the actor should always try to make it better. Why would you yeah. not try to make it better? And I've, it, I've shot self-tapes where my self-tape guy said to me, I think casting will be happy with that. And I say, why? And he's like, well, because you took what they gave you and you made it better. Yeah. If you always do that, with anything in life, I think that's going to lead to good things. I don't think there's any saving a bad script if you're an actor. Mm. But I certainly believe that even if you are given a bad script, you can do things to be the best part of a really bad movie. My God, I've Absolutely. tried. I I've have tried. Exam- <laughs> I've tried <laughs> yeah, numerous yeah. times. I know, I know, I know. You and you and you and like I could name some examples oh, yeah. of movies yeah. right now. I don't really know if I want to. But like where I, I some good examples of like holy shit this actor in this movie where this script is abysmal and every other performance yeah. sucks they outshined everybody <laughs> and it's so respectable to see <laughs> and you're just like wow like how did you with mm-hmm. scene partners and this awful script and these yeah. scene partners who don't aren't, aren't helping you at all mm-hmm. just pull this out like it's it's extraordinary it's, and, a, it's like Herculean yeah, yeah it's it's, it's, it's unbelievable and the movie's still not good and the scene's still not good yeah. but you can tell that the performance is good even if the the lines are just garbage <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean it's like wow this is a five instead of a two exactly now. and you know it wasn't Holy. the director because if it was the director the rest of the acting would be up to that standard yeah it's and not the, and the <laughs> script, ah yeah that's smart <laughs> and the script would have yeah. probably gotten a rewrite exactly yeah <laughs> exactly yeah thanks guys absolutely thanks no, guys. No, you um, it. It so great. what i'm saying is i wrote a shit scene and you fixed it that's why i'm saying no i didn't <laughs> think you wrote it. <laughs> although you did have <laughs> the character names were wrong on the script and we had to go through half a page that's you remember that there were there were like two or three lines where one actor had them and another. Oh, actor that's didn't bad for me because I missed them. that too. No, I missed it. It's my okay. Point. But but we did correct it. Was like that's what I do. I come in. I'm you know. I'm it, was like, it was like it was like it was right. Like, you gotta squeeze that lemon. It man. was like two or three lines. That's when we rehearsed in Joel. And it's like it's background. inconsequential. Yeah, we yeah. just crossed them out. It was it's no big deal. And yeah. I even when I learned that, I knew that that's what you meant. That had meant. Yeah, yeah. It made more yeah. sense than raining out because it was supposed to, and I just am down and made typos. But like when we were rehearsing that scene even with Jack for like half a second when I just said like do like 30% acting the night before or whatever Mm -hmm. it was still like oh okay I think Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be bigger than I think it is and then we got to the day and it was great Mm -hmm. and it's like slowly it was slowly dialed up to but I did show you a bit of that in the rehearsal you did you did yeah yeah but it it was great so it didn't matter but it was like first second third take we were like slowly like dialing it up and then fourth fifth sixth we started to get really comfortable which was really really good and i remember like being on set and in like that fifth take sort of area it was started, that was a sweet spot yeah you started putting things in and i was like telling you to like keep maybe one you were maybe putting like five things in a scene and i, I was, was like, getting cheeky keep one or one or two of these and i was like, getting cheeky i was telling you like specific <laughs> things to take out yeah yeah, yeah. But, but that was I mean, him too a little bit yeah but that's your responsibility is to like mm. try and improv and it's my responsibility to be like no stick to the script a bit more if that makes sense oh, the fun police yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> oh man and fun uh, i was conti as well yeah oh, yeah, taylor yeah. yeah be yourself oh yeah, yeah, yeah keep yeah, your legs both. crossed this yeah, way yeah, and make sure you drink this exactly yeah and also the crease on your shirt has to stay like yeah yeah Anyhow, no. but, but yeah, it was it was hilarious because you were like adding all these things to the scene, yeah. and I could tell that like the the people on set who didn't know who you were, and I was like encouraging <laughs> you to like say all this horrible shit, yeah. and like they thought because I don't know that, that who, I who was like who like no, um, I'm not naming me. names. No, no, no. You didn't know me that well? <laughs> yeah. Dude, well, I mean, I, like, I, I like, didn't. I, I met you probably three times. Like, this guy is a fucking <laughs> well, uh, bull in a china I, shop. I, and you know what the thing? I was like, I don't care. This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, this is turning that out means, so That means good. I've sold it. Like, listen, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, exactly sure. what we're doing. And, and, and it, I just want to clarify as well. Not sure. at all that I thought you were a dickhead. And we but I was like, no, no. Yeah, exactly. But it was so much fun. Oh, okay, no. He's got this part to like... He's really comfortable with The being character this guy. is a this dickhead. Is cool. No, but it was so much fun to encourage you to be more of a dickhead in front of all these people mm. who don't know that you're not really a dickhead. Oh, thanks. And so they also yeah. thought that I was a dickhead for encouraging you to be a dickhead. It was oh, great. I was having yeah. a great time. And everybody else I had a great time too. It. It also, <laughs> see, I didn't I didn't uh, maybe I was playing the character in a good way because yeah. I didn't 
perceive any of that no, no, no. from anyone because you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. so that's you exactly must have been in it. So, yeah. that's exactly that yeah, yeah. character everyone was like this fucking guy that no, character no, just he, 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 <laughs> he's seen this so much well. of a world this yeah. way no but it's Absolutely. really it's, it's the same principle as yeah. Jack has some really emotional moment in the scene that he had to really get through and like I think everybody thought that that was like <laughs> almost real like seriously real yeah. a few of the crew members hadn't read the script or like a fair few and so he had this moment and the whole crew like takes are quiet because people need to shut up but this take not only was it quiet everybody in the room was just like oh when we got to this point yeah i'm not telling yeah. what the scene is but everybody yeah. in the room just like shut down and like was like statuesque and they were like holy shit what's actually going on here yeah and i'm the guy who doesn't like to cut off actors when they're in the middle of those moments mm -hmm. and so i just let him do his thing for like three minutes or something and everybody was waiting for me to cue another actor to go into the scene and i was not cueing that actor because what do you want me to do cut this off like no mm. this is brilliant i'm not cutting this off mm. but everybody was so uncomfortable for that three minutes because jack was going through whatever he was going through but he's just acting and then even after the take he like looked at me and smiled and i gave him a hug but it was like he but he was you know he was just really in it he was, and it he worked loved it. and you've seen the yeah. timing of the cut oh, and, the edit and, that, and, and it worked it does work yeah but it, it was so That's it was great. so worth yeah. it. It, it i it's fun when the crew has that sort of reaction because mm. you sort of know that like, I know that it's real, and quite honestly, that's good enough, but it's just nice to see it in the other people on set when they, like... Because they, they're believing him having that emotional breakdown. It's the same as them believing that you're really a dickhead. It's if the you, same if thing. If you think about it, yeah. effectively, yeah. that means that you're doing the character well, because yeah, people yeah. that don't know you are believing it. Therefore, yeah. people that don't know you watch yeah. the film, yeah. they're going to believe you as that character. Exactly. When I was on Neighbours Man, I had... And, and I was really good in some stuff on it and not very good in yeah. some scenes and everything in between. And we mm. shot quickly and I mm. shot a lot. Mm. I shot like a thousand scenes in like a year, something like that. That's like, ridiculous. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. And I had like people come up to me and like one old lady comes up to me on the street. I'm going out to try and get a coffee. Maybe I'm going to catch up trying to pick up a chick or something like that. Yeah. I'm out on the street. Some old lady comes up to me. She's like... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I didn't, I didn't, right, right. What are you talking about? Because of who How dare is. you yeah. do that to Toadie? Right, right, right. And I was like, well, I did what's written in the script. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to, it's my she job. I'm yeah. trying to do what's written in the script. That's great. So that, that if you can get people to believe like that, yeah. then that means so, that you're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Someone really came up to you. And, yeah, so that's, that's really that's great. great. <laughs> it's so true. And it made me feel... Yeah, yeah. You know, but there's, but there's still like, people oh, who have that, that problem. Like, I swear to God, people see actors in movies and they're like, you, he's, I hate him. Yeah. It's like, no, you don't hate him. He made you hate him because yeah. he's that good. Like, yeah. you don't yeah. get it. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. No, but it's, that's what it should be. It's like, I don't want to say people should not like you or should like you or whatever. But if people come out of that scene that you did and they don't like you by the end of it, that's kind of a compliment in a way. Yeah. It, I, I'd be fully supported with character. people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and my yeah. job is to, do the character yeah. as we spoke about yeah. as naturally and yeah. realistically as possible yeah. and make it as interesting as I can based upon that realism and naturalism without losing that realism and naturalism. Exactly. Yeah. Now I've had, I've seen people I've worked with doing a scene when they're home alone on their own, not want to do certain things in that scene because they know that that footage is going to go Australia wide. So they're completely organizing their performance, not based upon the naturalism and realism that they should be. Yeah. But based upon knowing that 400,000 people are going to see that. Because they're afraid yeah, well. to look like a villain to the general public. Yes. But for someone like my character in Bloom, mm -hmm. I'm a nice guy. If I see someone with a flat tire on the way home, I'm going to pull over and help them change the tire. You know, that's just, I'm Taylor. But when you're the character, you are not, that's not Taylor. Yeah, I know. Mm. So I had to do that without fear of appearing like a villain, like a dickhead, like a bad guy. Because he can come across a little bit like that. Anyway, that's all I'm going to you say. Might, you, might, you might remember that in the week mm. that I met you, we were headed to someone's house one night. And I was in your car. Somebody else was in the car as well, I think. And this person's car had broken down. Mm -hmm. We can tell the story at a later date because this is a longer story. We've been meaning to tell the story for a little while. Should we tell the story? I haven't heard this story. It wasn't, you've been, it wasn't, you've been 
teasing me with this one. What is the... Why don't we wrap up with this story? Okay, okay. Hey, okay. No, it wasn't a, a car had broke. It was no, somebody else's no, no. car had broken down. Yeah, it wasn't a flat tire. It was um, somebody's wanted to jumpstart their car. Okay, yeah, but... You're talking this, about this doesn't and make... someone came over... This story doesn't no, make no, no. me I uh, think end I, up... I've heard the first Wait, two seconds of the story. Do you want to put the story in the podcast? Yeah, sure. Okay, I don't care. Okay. But this, this doesn't make me end up as a nice guy. No, story. no, no. It does make you end up as not only a nice guy, but like a guy who's not to be fucked with either. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh, was... well, if you think it's gangster, then so go we... ahead and tell it. <laughs> make me sound <laughs> tough. This, this was yeah. a great story. So what happened was... Okay. We were at... We had pulled in somewhere. Yeah, we had some steaks. We, maybe we had some steaks. It was KFC. It was KFC. Oh. At like midnight, we parked in the steak place. Damn straight, yeah. yeah okay. And then, and then, sorry. And there was a KFC <laughs> next door, and we went to a KFC. Yeah. It was like ending night at shoot or one of them. Yeah, because I, I remember, I, and their character had been like losing weight, right. and so I hadn't been eating anything. So, so it must have been the last. Right thing. after, I was like, "Let's go and get something to eat." I'm yeah, so yeah. hungry. So we went with the crew and people in like two different cars, I think, but there were like eight of us. And at that, the other crew members pulled off, and there was this car that was parked. And this guy needed a jump start to his car. And, and, and they were a bit shady. Oh, yeah. Two but, shady guys. You know, hey, Aussie Battler, they were down on their luck. Yeah. All right, I get that. Yeah. And a guy was asking for help, and yeah. I'm willing to help out up to a point. Yeah. So you grabbed... Uh, they had jumper cables, I think. And so... I drove my car up next to their car. Yeah. 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 Really convenient for them. Popped the uh, the front hood thing. Yeah, <laughs> you I think I can see going. where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> keep no, keep going. Yeah. So they, so they That's jumped, really funny. So they asked if they could jump start the car, basically. <laughs> Taylor said, "Yeah, okay, cool." So they, <laughs> let's say we don't know for sure, but I think we can say they pretended that their car needed a jump start. Uh huh. Yeah. And they hooked uh, they hooked the cables up, and this lasted about two or three minutes. And Taylor and, and was you're in the car this. waiting. I was talking. This. No, I was outside the car talking to another guy. Okay. And we were actually saying like, it'd be a cool idea for a film. Oh, don't like, give it away! No, okay, no, don't okay, give it I away. I won't say what the film. We don't want this going but, out but because I want to use it. It had this. some relevance to the current scenario because okay. it was it was inspiring to think about like a little thing that might have happened. We yeah, might make sure. This movie, which so we're not gonna, maybe I have, maybe one. Day. I have notes about this movie still. But could anyhow, be. Could be. We could use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, wouldn't that be hilarious? Then this this dude, who he's kind of a lanky guy. Thank God Taylor's built like a truck. Oh, but thanks, like man. no, for real. Because me and this other guy were not. Anyhow, but yeah, right. but but he was like, thanks, um, man. He said he said he said, <laughs> yo, mate, uh, this thing's not really working. I'm just gonna like take your battery out so that I can. Uh, oh, you're kidding. No, and um and Taylor was like, no, you're not taking my battery out. And then and then and then. <laughs> No, but like he's gone red. He's the nicest guy ever, but like, <laughs> yeah. dude, like really. And Thanks, it, man. That's so gangster. No, I, I, I <laughs> this part definitely has to stay in. This is definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, you know what? This I want to just... put this at the front of the yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the bit where I. Where we can we can tease this and then go into. Thank you. Hey, here's it. I want this bit. everywhere. Yeah, I want that everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for like embarrassing you. But no, thanks. But, no. but it was, and he was just like, "Nah, be easy, mate. Don't worry about blah blah." And um. You were just like, no, I'm not doing that. And you basically just like... You, I think that guy knew that if it came down to a fight, he was going to lose. Really? Big time. Yeah. because really? he Because he, cause he backed off a little bit and he the, took the jumper cables off and you're like, dude, let's go. So he, we went off and I swear to God, the guy next to me in the back of the car was like, dude, that dude pulled a knife after we pulled off. So are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we told you coming this. back to me now. Yeah, yeah. We told you this, and and whoa, this dude, really? Shady. Yeah, yeah. He yeah he had a knife in his pocket the whole time. So it was just like one of those. <laughs> it was just I'm bringing this up to support the point. I initially that Taylor Gorkner is a guy who there's proof. I swear, who would help a guy jumpstart his car at midnight after eating KFC after a full week of shooting. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Up until a point where the <laughs> dude asks to take the battery out yeah, of his car. Yeah, because that makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that, yeah, because if it's not jump starting this way, I just pull the battery yeah. out, then it will work. Then it'll really connect. Because yeah, you're going to gonna the put, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, going to put yeah. that battery back in my car after your car's yeah, on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's just going to drive away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Look, I think, you know, everyone has an obligation to help everyone. Yeah. Up to a certain point where you're not getting taken advantage of. Sure. And I want to help everyone, but this guy was going to cross that line. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
And it's gonna take you at a certain point, man. I'm sorry. I I like being nice, and yeah, I yeah, want uh-huh. to be nice. Yeah, yeah. But if you cross that threshold, there's another side, <laughs> man. Yeah, and yeah. and I'll do what I need to do to protect yeah. myself, and my yeah. family, and my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, good on you. So, but it, nothing ended up happening. Just that I didn't end up getting messed with by this guy. Yeah, he yeah. knew, hey, man, this is not going any further. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, well, thanks for making me sound way more <laughs> badass than I am. Oh, I know, but like it was, it was commendable for sure. I really? Think, I think, yeah, I think the guy who was with me and I were like, we were like, this is not good. Like these guys, they might be on something or other. And like, it was, yeah. it was not a good place to be at midnight in a car park where there aren't many security cameras around. Where, yeah. Like it was, it was Near sort of, sort of shady. Yeah. And it was like. You know, and I was just like, no, you're not taking it out. Yeah, nah. yeah. And he and, and I think I remember he was like, oh, come on, man, I'll just take it out. I was like, nah, you're not taking it out, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that. Yeah. Because most people, like, you know, some people might be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be too nice. Mm. No, because yeah. that serves no purpose. It's like, you know, I know what you're trying to do, dude. <laughs> why Why yeah. would that change anything? Like, you wouldn't just be nice, you'd be stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just being stupid. You know? Yeah. I can't believe you had a knife. Man, that could have gone a bad way. That's, yeah. Yeah. I'm lucky. We're lucky to be here. I got to play that idiot <laughs> character in your movie. Otherwise, who else would you have had to play him? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah nobody actually. Yeah. We tried casting and it just wasn't working. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we asked for. I don't know that we got in self tapes, but like we, yeah. there was just nobody who could do this character that I just Thanks, felt man. like was I was comfortable even giving it to. I just had to go full goofball with it. So true. Now, heading into pre production on on the next one, I'm gonna try and get a. I'm going to try and get a title reveal from Noah out of this. He probably won't do it. <laughs> Will he? No, I'm not gonna, the next film. I'm going to try and get the official title listen, reveal. Listen, you're welcome to try, <laughs> yeah. man. I'm not. I'm going to try to get the official... Because you know I'm someone not to be fucked with. No, the official <laughs> the official title reveal. <laughs> That's the angle, Taylor. I look forward to cast... I mean, you've already, you actually mm. said that it's already... Yeah, what's made. the name of that film? I forgot. Maybe what, not what this one, on? but one of the future ones. Yeah. We'll, we'll do our castings, and I know a lot of really <laughs> yeah. great actors well, and actresses. We so. all know that we're all going to be producers on it. Like, no yeah. matter what sort to of... To be actors. producers on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the... On the, the future movie. Yeah. <laughs> The so, future movie. Yeah. Yes. The movie following this movie. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, but yes. You, so we're you, not going to do a title no. reveal, but maybe I'll try in the future. Again. At some point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Damn. Well, I had to try. We yeah, had to no, try. You, try. you yeah. got my comp. You built me up with all that confidence. I had to try. Yeah. No. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You know, you know what's great that is that you guys can ask for a reveal as much as you want, and then I edit the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's great. Just, <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah. Didn't want to mean it. Yeah, silly buggers. Let's let people wonder to put it what, what the <laughs> hell it's going to be, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. hopefully we get a distribution for Bloom where we know we're all going to be working on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I think everyone's really excited for the next one and many future films that you're going to make yeah. with Calgram and uh, you too, Isaac. And you too, Taylor. And I'm not Yeah, I, I want to <laughs> direct something one day, but let's... That might be an interesting idea to have a conversation about me having not directed, but having worked with a lot of directors. Yeah. So basically what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to go into detail, but what I'm going to do when I find the right thing for me to direct, which is not any of the scripts that I've shown you guys yet. I don't know what it's going to be. I'll probably write something with intent to direct it. And then I'll just get you guys to like follow me around all day and just tell me if I'm doing anything stupid. (laughs) Right. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's called script super continuity. Yeah, okay. like that's, yeah. yeah. Help as, me with as, the shot as list. and I understand it. We'll organize it, and then I'll just get you guys to follow me around. Tell me if I do or say anything dumb. Tell yeah. me if I've crossed the line. I'm not talking about the line uh, metaphorically. I'm talking about the line in the scene. Cross, yeah, you know what right, I mean. Because right. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. I'm just shooting. I'm, thank anything. you for clarifying. Taylor, right, yeah. Taylor, Taylor, you've, you've got to cross the line. line. No, it's yeah. a great shot. It's right there. Because like, I don't understand. The line. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell me if I crossed the line. Yeah. Okay. We can do some podcasts about directing and writing. For those, mm-hmm. I will come with notes. I'm going to come yeah. with a book and be like, so I need to make this point and this point and this point. Yeah. 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 We need to be, I think when we break that up, we can be really specific. We'll talk yeah. about directing. I'd love For to talk. Sure. I've not done it, but I would certainly like to do it. But at the moment, I'm very, very busy on 
acting, producing, a little bit of writing, a little bit of adapting, a mm-hmm. little bit of business, almost running the company of Caligram, getting it to where it's needed to be. Yeah. But I'd, that's certainly one day I'd like to direct. I really yeah. would. I think also because I know what it feels like as an actor. I know there's many more factors than just the performance. Yeah. That's why you, you guys can really help me with that mm-hmm. and with the performance as well. But uh, I know what it's like to work, to be the actor who is not feeling very good mm-hmm. on, on a day. Mm-hmm or feeling really good or something in the middle so i feel like because i'm an okay actor but not an amazing actor but not shit actor either i can probably communicate to pull out really some good stuff out of other actors yeah yeah. if actors i think are being directed by directors and the actor doesn't feel like the director has as much to lose as they do like maybe from an emotional standpoint from a vulnerability standpoint I can write in a scene, like, in my scripts that some character has some highly emotional thing they have to go through. Like, I can write that, you know. I would never say that it's easy for me to write such a thing, because I do believe that the more emotionally complicated a scenario is, as I'm writing it, I personally feel like I have to live that to write it. I don't Mm -hmm. mean live it literally, but I mean be in it to be able to get there if live a lot of it yeah yeah exactly like yeah. and the difference is that I don't have to do it in front of a camera yeah. that's true so, that, that's why it's also great to have as much life experience as you can in any number of things yeah, so yeah. that you can put it back into your work yeah yeah but I feel like there's a lot of scripts where I, that I've read where it's just like I'm reading these horribly emotional things happen I don't feel like the writer has like been through any of it yeah. and so like when I, I I feel like there is something where it's like when an actor gets to set and they can tell that whoever has written this has been really sincere with it, that they kind of feel like there's a bit more trust and, like, ability. Because if you are working with a director who you don't feel like is emotionally connected to the material and they ask you to do something hyper-emotional and you can't get there mm-hmm. and then they get mad at you for that or they are unsatisfied mm. with that, it's like, well, you do it. Yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I know. That you can't sucks. really say what well, you do it because they're not trained as an actor. Exactly. But if they're an but... actor as well as a director... You know what I mean? You don't have that out. Believe me, there's been hundreds of times I've wanted to say, well, you do it then. Yeah, exactly. Because as an actor, when you're doing the scene, you're holding up eight things mm-hmm. and then they'll come in and be like, hey, can you just do two more things? And yeah. it's like, well, give me, how about you give me credit for the eight things that I am yeah. or, um, that I'm holding up. But you up. have yeah. a total right to feel You're only way. looking at the two and, and, and fixating on the two things yeah. that I'm not, yep. but I'm already doing eight things. Yep. So that's why I know that I'll have that understanding when I talk with an actor yep. if when I direct one day. And the director feels like, well, you signed up to this, therefore you should be yeah. able to do it and I'm not getting what I paid for, I guess. And yeah. then you're like, well, it's not that fucking easy. And like, you have to know as a director that when there's you write a scene like this, mm. you're not paying for the actor to actually get there. You're really not. You're yeah. just hoping they do. You're paying for them to show up on the exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. You, you don't actually know what you're getting. So Absolutely. You, and you also, know, like, they're showing up hoping you're going to direct. Exactly. You have to direct. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like, yeah. that goes that way yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. You are... And you're also up, leading the film. Direct. Yeah, so there's a, there's an assumption. And I do think, if this film sucks, it's on his head. I do think there's a responsibility of the director his or her, to, to sort of be like a like a good parent on set and actually like support you. Like I actually think that's part of the job description. That, that's why all the same actors keep working with all the same directors because they have that shorthand. They can yeah. get where they need to get quicker. Yeah, why wouldn't you? There's more of a guaranteed element there where they know each other as opposed to if you're gonna let's say someone does a great audition Mm -hmm. and you're like wow holy shit they could be that character but then you don't know how they're gonna fare over like a 60 day shoot or something like that you know so like can they hold up on like day 44 when like they're tired and they don't really want to be there because everyone feels great on day one and two you know but if it's someone you know that you're like certified with yeah then you know that they're going to hold up. So that's why the same directors keep working with the same actors and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. And because those actors feel safe yeah. working with that director. Mm-hmm. Because an actor to go and work with a director where they don't feel safe, we've spoken about this before, but if an actor feels safe and comfortable, they're going to do their best work. I, yes. gen, in a general sense. No, I completely agree. In a general sense. Yes, yeah. yeah. You're and absolutely I've, right. I've had times when I've been feeling uncomfortable, having to play comfortable. Yeah. Then it's like okay, you've you've got to <laughs> you've got to fake it. Really, yeah, yeah. you've got to fake it really well. Um, and there's been times when I'm comfortable playing comfortable, and that's when you're having fun. That's mm-hmm. when you're hanging out, 
you're doing it on your ear, you're having a great time. If you're uncomfortable shooting uncomfortable, I could get that too. That could work. Sure. And we've spoken about that before as mm, well. Yes. So that could work, but that can be a little bit unethical almost. Yeah. You know? So just generally, just as a director, I feel like you've got to make your actors feel comfortable. Yep. And you have to rally everyone to believe in where you're going. Yep. Yeah. And if everyone's on board in doing that, then you're halfway to yep. making something good. Yeah. yeah. There's just an unbelievable amount of trust that needs to be there, mm-hmm. especially because obviously the actors, the one per- putting their face on the screen and for however many people to see and you know you, and they you can look it. real silly if this is the wrong thing and they're I, putting I actually, the faith in the director to make sure it's the right thing mm-hmm. yeah i think if something and danny has spoken to me about this a lot if a film turns out not very good at all the actors probably get hurt the least it probably just fades all away like yeah there's been some not very good films that have had good actors in them and the film just fades away but yeah. the director's can get hurt yeah I the think writers so. where do the writers fare in all of that i don't think anybody knows who writes a movie apart from studio heads the writers so, win if it does well if it does well then the writers can get some recognition yeah if it gets yeah i don't think things like that or um, if it's a famous writer i'll say that i don't think writers in get general credit. get any fucking recognition i think yeah. that it's always the case that oh you directed it that's the important part it's like bullshit you yeah. wrote it that's the important part in theater it's the writers in mm-hmm. theater, everybody knows what a Tennessee Williams screenplay is. Oh, it's a, sorry, play is. Yeah. Tell me who directed a Tennessee Williams play. Yeah. It's like you just can't. It's always the writers in theater, and in film, it has to do with the director, and it has to do with like auteur theory. And I think auteur theory, largely, I I I don't like it, and I don't agree. Alrighty. Sweet. Um, so that's the end of. Uh, whatever the part second two. part two of yeah. uh, acting and talking about acting and we don't know if we're going to do more of these but we think we will yeah. i think we got in some pretty interesting stuff in there yeah hopefully yeah. without losing the naturalism and realism along the way <laughs> no. you know? yeah right i, try to I make think it, it was a good balance of interesting I think and it was believable a bit too much interesting oh in the no i was faking it i was doing <laughs> yeah. too much okay. taylor i'm gonna need you to dial it back to 30 oh, percent no. oh well, now i'm boring <laughs> no, no. now i'm boring <laughs> Okay, um, Isaac, play us some harmonica. Okay, <clears throat> sounds good. My voice is... Take it away, away Isaac. Okay, let's go. How good's that? Thanks for listening. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.